Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of React WooCommerce Theme Development. In the previous episode, we learned about how to fetch the product using the REST API. So as you can see, we're getting all the products here. And in this video, we're going to learn about how to display the product onto our next year's application. Many of you have asked me about how to display the JSON data in this format, like pass format. I mean, usually it is like this raw. So there's an extension available for that. And that extension is called JSON formatter. Uh, that's a Chrome extension basically. So this one right here. Okay, so if you install this extension, you should be able to get it in this format, right? Pretty simple. Now let's continue. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go back to our Next.js application and we will go to source components and we'll create a directory called products. Inside of this directory, we're going to have the components for the products. So in order for us to create the grid, we have the tailwind grid generator. So let's say we want to have four items. So we have four items and then on mobile, I would like them to stack one below another. So it's a default one. And then let's have some gap. So, and then for the wide mobile, let's have at least two. Gap again can stay the same. Tablet, I would like to have three at least. So for laptop, it can be the same. And for the desktop, we can have four of them, right? So what this has done is it's so simple that it's automatically generated the Tailwind classes using the Flexbox. And it's kind of given us these uh, containers that we can then use to basically render the content onto the front end in a grid format. So what we're going to do is we will call it index, call it index and we'll say const products. Okay. And you're going to say export default products. And inside of this, I can do return. And all I have to do is just copy this and paste it there. Okay. There you go. Uh, if you want to check load a MIPSUM, for all of these, you'll be able to see that. And now if you go to uh, your index.js and where you have this main, I can get rid of all of that stuff. And inside of main, I can do products, that's it. And it's automatically imported those products here. And by the way, this is a, an internal dependency. So this sh should go over here. And that way, we can have we can display the product on onto the uh, home page and then also we just need to remove these because we are dealing with jsx so jsx doesn't understand this so we need to remove it there's one more yep there you go perfect so we've got that of course this needs to go inside of a container so what i'm going to do is for the main i'm going to give it a class of so we'll say container and then mx auto let's also have some padding so p4 there you go let's see there you go perfect so we've got, uh, so we should be able to display the products here. Uh, the next thing we want to do is basically make an XEO request to get the products. So what we're going to do is we'll go back to our index.js and where we are fetching the header and footer, we need to fetch the products as well. So let's, so what we're going to do is we'll say const. In fact, we'll just copy this thing. And this time the endpoint will be this one right here, like so. API get products and because this one is already called data, let me just make an alias of that and call it products. Okay. And now if I console log products, okay. And then if you check over here in the terminal, you should be able to get all the products. If you notice that you've got the products definitely, and you can see that in the terminal, but it's not very readable. Like, I mean, I don't like it. What if you want to inspect it and debug things? How do we do that? All you could do is next yes is an advanced debug mode. So all you have to do is pass this before next dev. So let's do that. I'm going to go over here before next dev. I'm going to pass that. So we have node options equals inspect and the next dev. Now let's start the development server. So I'm going to say npm run dev and you can see that node options is being used this time and the debugger is listening on this URL. So if you go back into the terminal, refresh, you'll notice that now you have this dev tool that is being indicated. And if you click on that, it takes you that URL. And now if you check, you have the replica of what you see on the terminal. And then you can also open the object and play around with it. Unlike here where 
it was all just printed out right of course you can pretty print it and stuff but then this is way better in my opinion right so you have your own debugging console that you can use so we have the products and display the products are being displayed which is great so you got our products which is perfect and all i have to do is just pass that okay so what we're going to do is so we're going to rename this header footer okay and now we're going to say data equals and then this data is going to contain header footer okay and then it's also going to contain the products by the way this is same as writing like so so i'm just putting it like so okay so we got that and then that's it so now if i go back and check uh what do we get in the data so i'm just going to return null from here for the time being let's see what we get in props here okay props props let's see so in props we have header and footer products etc which is great so what we could do is instead of saying data we can just say header footer and products okay so i'm gonna say header footer and then products products and then over here i can do the same thing okay and then we have the products available as well which is great and now i can pass the product to my component there you go all right now what's happening here is basically the first request is going to get resolved once that is resolved then this second request will get resolved and then finally it's going to output that data here so notice that um, so notice that we are using async await so it's going to go into that sequence all right now i don't like this of course uh, as we spoke about earlier that we are going to ensure that we have a constant so we rather put that information in the constant here so export const get products endpoint and point equals now we need the front end url right so for the front end url we can just create an environment variable here and we'll just say next public site url it's going to be a front end url okay so we'll say http localhost 3000 so this one we just copy that put that here right and let's ensure that we put that in the env example as well so let's do that all right we can say front-end site url front-end next.js site url back-end wordpress site url okay perfect close that close that and now i can just say process dot env dot next public site url and then after that it's going to be slash and that will be slash api slash products let's do that slash api slash products perfect all i have to do now is just use this endpoint which is going to be much cleaner so endpoint hit it and i'm pretty sure this would have pulled up on top like it has which is great so we have got the products and now if you go back to our products i should be able to get the products here if not or if is empty from lodash products or yeah let's see what we get return null right so if products not available i'm going to return null otherwise let's just console product warn products and see what we get okay so i'm going to refresh the page and see what happens restart the development server so let's do that refresh okay there you go so we've got products we've got success true which is perfect and i think that uh we should just pass the products directly there so if we go back here so we're saying products right but this is products dot products so let's do that or uh, to be on a safer side i think it's to make it better let's call it products data and then this will be products like so okay so head and head and footer so notice that this is same as writing like so because both the names were the same that's why we could just write like this but here the names are different now it's product data dot products that's why i'm writing like so okay cool so now if i check if i refresh i should be able to get just the products so now this should be better okay so let's see there you go i've got all the products perfect i just have to loop through them 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of all of this because we're going to loop through it. And we're going to say that, let's get rid of this as well. Just say hello for now. We're going to say that if products.length, okay, if products.length, then products.map, this is going to be product, and then and this will be null. This will be like so, and that should do the trick. And at the same time, we should also check if it's an array or not, because remember, this is an array. So if it's empty or not is array, this will be from Lodash. It's pulled it on top automatically, which is great. Product, then return null. We don't want to proceed further in case if it's empty or if it's not an array, okay? Okay, then. Then next thing we do is we check what's included. So we have the ID here, so we can use that as a key, right? Product, optional chaining ID. So that's going to be unique. And then inside of that, I'm going to need to have the image, the title of the product, etc. So where do we have that? Let's see. I've got the permalink, which is great. So in my opinion, it's going to be a tag. In fact, not a tag, but link. Next year's link tag. Import link from next link. Okay. And inside of this, we have, we'll have the a tag. HRF will go on top, as we discussed in the previous episodes. And then inside of the HRF, I'm going to put, oops, let's put hello for now. So where do we have? We have permalink, right? Permalink, this one. So I'm going to say product.permalink. If it's available, great. If not, then it's going to be just a hash for now. I'll just go to the home page. That's fine. And over here, it's not going to be, it's going to be double question mark because we are checking the optional chaining. Okay. And there's one more update we need to make. So if you notice, if you console out header footer, what you get is basically data and you get the header footer inside of it, which is why uh, you, you won't see header, header menu over here. So what we need to do is we need to go back at the bottom and make sure we pull the data out of that. So, so we're gonna say header footer, header footer dot data, or we can call it header footer data. I think that'll make more sense. Okay. So that way now we also update this. We can probably break this into a different line to look much cleaner in my opinion. And now if you check, there we go. We have our header and menu back. And we can further improve we can further improvise this by putting the whole thing from here to like so. Yep, this will just looks much cleaner now. Okay. Awesome. Now, if you go back and check, you can see we've got hello, hello everywhere. And if you click on that, open it up, you can see that we've got that proper link for that particular product. And then now we can get the product name also. So let's do that. So where is the product name? That's the name. So we can say h3 product.name. Okay. All right. See? There you go, you can now see that you've got gift collection, bags, health products, all of that, which is perfect. The next thing we need to do is basically put the image of the product. So we're gonna do that in the next video, all right? So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. Do follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran H. Sayed. And please do start my repository to support my work. My repository address is nextjs woocommerce rest api and thanks to all the beautiful 11 people who have already started my repository and do follow me on github and twitter as well and by the way we completed 1000 followers on github today so congratulations uh, everyone and thank you so much for your love and support and do follow me on twitter as well my twitter handle is Cody Tech. okay so i'm going to see you in the next video thank you very much bye bye